we were going to make a rocket out of a dryer part. It just seemed like a really good idea. From then on, I started sort of tinkering. A kid of a family friend who I hang out, hung out with, and he was the one that got me started about thinking about things like that. My father sold electric plants, standby generators, so I had access to a bunch of engines. Set it all in the garage and say, go for it, or tell me where to go get it. In that sort of hands-off parental way, that worked. I'm not sure he intended it to work that way, but when you have to struggle and figure it out yourself, you learn a lot. Physics is much less hands-on, typically, than engineering. You learn a lot of theory about the way the world works. Once you apply yourself to a problem, the complexities of the problem are usually accessible. You know, you can understand what's going on. But it's, it's a great background. You know, it, it teaches you to solve problems analytically in a really disciplined and methodical way. And whether it's gardening or cooking or, or bike wheels, it's, it's useful. It doesn't have anything to do with personal relationships, which is, of course, the problem, but we work that up. There were so many riders and racers that were just immediately into it. And so they were pushing things as hard as they could. And that meant that as a builder or as a rider, you were, you were in that same mix. Being in that situation and with people having problems and you having to solve them, was a great incubator. You know, it made you think hard about, you know, what to do next. The, the idea of welding was just inherited from the old school, or brazing, rather. Welding was kind of novel at that time, and, and the traditionalists wouldn't buy something that was TIG welded because it wasn't brazed. And it's, cycling's a very religious thing. You know? So I did some comparisons of brazed steel joints and TIG welded steel joints and learned enough about what happens in the thermal history of the processes to be able to take advantage of that. And that, that's where the gusset design came from, and that's why when I switched the way I made mountain bikes around, um, it worked, you know, it made much stronger frames. John Burke called and said, do you guys, do you want to design parts for us? And I said, sure, and offered him the possibility of investing in the company. And he said, well, we don't really invest in companies, but we'd, we'd be interested in buying it. And in a month, we were done. His dad came out and visited. The guy's like awesome, you know, one of the greatest guys I've ever met. I trusted him, we did the deal and that was it. The engineers are always exuberant, they want to appease, they want to push the envelope themselves and Keith is always this figure over here being the voice of reason and at the end of the day we're pushing the envelope, we're moving things forward but Keith is going to ensure that that product is, is really going to hold up to the test of the real world. A lot of new engineers coming in have strong opinions and Keith is really diligent about um, shaping and grooming them and giving and offering that experience that he's learned over the many years of tinkering. If things are going well and, and I think things are like on a good track and not likely to go off the rails, then I stay out of it and, and try to spend my time on things that are more useful. If I feel they need my advice, sometimes they don't feel that I, they need my advice, then I offer it and, and get into it. Um, there are times when if there's something going wrong, I'm a guy that can help fix it because I've seen a lot and can do a lot of the engineering. For each saddle that we develop, one of the most stringent stop dates is really getting Keith Bontrager's approval of that saddle. And so we send them every iteration of every saddle that we make. It's really great to get that feedback because there's not a single product that he will sugarcoat and tell you that it's fine when it's really not. They'll send me a prototype, you know, and I'll, and I'll tell them what I think. Not always rah-rah positive, but that's, that's my role there. You know, they've got, it, it's, it's cool not working there because I can be kind of gruff and I can be straight up with them. Where if I had to deal with them every day, it would be a much bigger problem. You know, I wouldn't want to piss everybody off all the time. I still don't, but, I, but it happens sometimes and that's cool. You know, that's, I play it straight. You know, here's the engineering. Here's what you got. This is what you should do. Keith has this um, vast history of experience and we're always looking to tap into that. Performance is assumed here. The prowess that we have on the engineering side in, in any categories we do is, is extensive. We're still responsible for a lot of the stuff that goes on Trek's bikes. In the big picture, that's a pretty significant thing. Being 
on top of our game in every respect in that is, is really pretty crucial. You know, we, it's the company we work with. We don't want to let them down. We want to be an asset, and so we've got to do it. And it's, and it's good work. You know, it's hard engineering, and it's, it's worth doing.